it may be thought that I will say that bodies in the street are a good thing, uh, that we should celebrate mass demonstrations and that bodies together on the street form a certain ideal of community or even a new politics worthy of praise. Though sometimes bodies assembled on the street are clearly cause for joy, even for hope, let us remember that the phrase bodies on the street can refer equally well to right-wing demonstrations, military soldiers assembled to quell demonstrations, and to forms of military occupation. So from the start, we have to be prepared to ask, under what conditions do we find bodies assembled on the street to be cause for celebration? Or what forms of assembly actually work in the service of realizing greater ideals of justice and equality? Although there are those who will say that active bodies assembled on the street constitute a surging multitude, one that in itself constitutes a radical democratic event or action, I am only partially in agreement with that view. There are all sorts of surging multitudes I don't want to endorse, and they would include racist or fascist congregations and mass movements. I don't think the point of politics is simply to surge forth together, constituting a new sense of the people, although sometimes for the purposes of radical democratic change, which I do endorse and for which I struggle, it is important to surge forth in ways that claim and alter the attention of the world. On the one hand, there are bodies that assemble on the street or online or through other less visible networks of solidarity, especially in prisons, whose political claims are made through language, action, gesture, and movement through linking arms, through refusing to move, to forming bodily modes of obstruction to police and state authority, in making contact in ways that are difficult to trace. And in this sense, we can say that these bodies form networks of resistance together, remembering that bodies are not just active agents of resistance, but also fundamentally in need of support. So I hope I am now able to make clear at least two points about vulnerability that seek neither to idealize nor to discount its political importance. The first is that vulnerability cannot be associated exclusively with injurability, that all responsiveness to what happens, including the responsiveness of those who document the losses of the past, is a function and effect of vulnerability, of being open to a history that is not told or being open to what another body undergoes. We can say that these are matters of empathy, but I want to suggest that part of what a body does, to use the phrase of Deleuze, derived from his reading of Spinoza, is to open onto the body of another or a set of others, and for that reason, bodies are not self-enclosed kinds of entities. They are always, in some sense, outside themselves, exploring or navigating their environment, extended and even sometimes dispossessed through the senses. To ask who are you is to avow that one does not know in advance who you are, that one is open to what comes from the other, and that one expects that no pre-established category will be able to answer in advance the question that is posed. Indeed, I would suggest in a certain Levinasian way, the question who are you has to remain an infinitely open question, unanswerable, in order to remain an ethical one. So when people take to the streets together, they form something of a body politic. And even if that body politic does not speak in a single voice, even when it does not speak at all or make any claims, it still forms, asserting its presence as a plural and obdurate bodily life. What is the political significance of assembling as bodies, stopping traffic or claiming attention? 
or moving, not as stray and separate individuals, but as a social movement of some kind. It does not have to be organized from on high, the Leninist presumption, and it does not need to have a single message, the logocentric conceit, for assembled bodies to exercise a certain performative force in the public domain. The we are here that translates that collective bodily presence might be read as we are still here, meaning we have not yet been disposed of. Such bodies are precarious and persisting, which is why I think we have always to link precarity with forms of social and political agency where that is possible. When the bodies of those deemed disposable assemble into public view, they are saying, we have not slipped quietly into the shadows of public life. We have not become the glaring absence that structures your ordinary life. In a way, the collective assembling of bodies is an exercise of the popular will and a way of asserting in corporeal form one of the most basic presuppositions of democracy, namely that political and public institutions are bound to represent the people and to do so in ways that establish equality as a presupposition of social and political existence. Finally then, bodies on the street are precarious, they're exposed to police force and sometimes endure physical suffering as a result. The risk is there and it seems to be increasing now that police regularly clear out the encampments of the Occupy movement through forcible means or, or clamp down on free assembly um, uh, 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 supported by uh, laws and policies that claim that free assemblies are security risks one way to obliterate a fundamental right. Those bodies are also obdurate and persisting. They insist on their continuing and collective there-ness or here and in these recent forms, organizing themselves without hierarchy, and so exemplifying the principles of equal treatment they are demanding of public institutions. Mm -hmm.